Hi and welcome in the Airflow 2.0 series where you are going to discover the new awesome features of Airflow 2.0. My name is Marc Lombardi, I'm the head of customer training at Astronomer and I'm super excited to show you this new feature as it can be really useful for you. Indeed, if you already have used sensors, you know that they are long running tasks. Basically, a sensor waits for something to happen before moving to the next task wait for a criterion to be made before moving to the next task. And the problem with sensors is that they can cause you some troubles if you have many sensors running in parallel, and that's exactly what we are going to see right now. Let's imagine that we have the following data pipeline with three tasks, waiting file, processing, and storing, where waiting file is actually a sensor waiting for a file to land at a specified location. As soon as you start triggering that DAG, waiting file will be started, and we'll wait for that file to land at the location. What a typical sensor does is that it checks every 60 seconds by default if the condition is met, if, in our case, the file is arrived. A very important point that you have to keep in mind is that like any other task in Airflow, a sensor takes a worker slot in order to be executed. Indeed, in Airflow, you have a limited number of worker slots, and that means a limited number of tasks that you can execute in parallel. Since a sensor is by definition a long-running task, you might end up with troubles. Let's imagine that you have four worker slots available. What about if you have four different sensors waiting for something to happen at the same time? Well, as you can guess, you won't be able to run any more tasks in your Airflow instance, and that is a big issue. Now I know what you can think. Indeed, with the sensors, we have two different modes, POC and Reschedule, where the Reschedule mode is actually used in order to avoid this issue of having all of your worker slots reserved for your sensors. But the thing is, if you have hundreds of different sensors running in parallel, you will reach a certain limit, and even with the Reschedule mode, you won't be able to trigger any more tasks. In addition, there are three different problems with typical sensors. And the first one is the underutilization of your machine. Indeed, most of the time your sensors do nothing except checking for a certain condition to be met every 60 seconds by default, but still keep reserving worker slots, and that means you are not able to execute as many tasks as you could do with your resources. And ultimately, you are paying for resources that you are not fully using. The second problem is that every task in Airflow emits heartbeats. And if you have many sensors running in parallel, since they are long running tasks, you will end up with many requests sent to the Metastore, increasing its load. Finally, with typical sensors, it's not uncommon to have many duplicates. Indeed, you might have different DAGs with different sensors, but actually waiting for the same thing. And since there is no mechanism to verify this, you are wasting resources and paying for that. So for all of those reasons, in Airflow 2.0, there is a new concept of sensors, which is the smart sensors. With the smart sensors, the big difference with the typical sensors is that instead of using one process for one sensor, you will use centralized processes to execute your sensors in batches. This process is divided in two phases, where the first one is about registering all of your sensors in the Metastore, and then you will have different DAGs, a bunch of DAGs corresponding to the smart sensor groups, running in order to execute and evaluate all of your sensors in batches. At the end, with the smart sensors, you will dramatically reduce the costs of your Airflow instance. Indeed, you will have less worker slots taken by your sensors, and so more other tasks to execute. The number of sensors running in parallel will be reduced, as well as the number of requests made to the Metastore, reducing its load. All right, now we have seen the theory, let's discover the smart sensors in practice. All right, at this point, if you want to follow what I'm going to show you on your computer, you just need to click on the link in the description below and you will land on this beautiful page. From there, the first thing you need to do is to set up and run Airflow 2.0. And to do that, pretty simple, you just need to copy that instruction right there on your terminal and execute it in order to install the Astronomer CLI. If you are on Windows, you just need to follow that link right there and you will get all the instructions you need in order to install it. If you are wondering why we are using the Astronomer CLI, well, that's because it is the easiest and fastest way to set up and run Airflow 2.0 locally. Once you have installed the Astronomer CLI, we are ready to move on. From your terminal, create a new folder, Airflow-2, 
like that and go into that folder where you need to execute the very simple command which is astro dev init in order to initialize the development environment. Once it's done, open your code editor and the first step is to open the file docker file right there in order to change the docker image of Airflow to use the latest version Airflow 2.0. To do this, go back to the instructions and copy the following line, then paste it right there. Save the file and we are ready. Open the folder DAGs and create a new file called sensor.py. Back to the instructions, copy the following code corresponding to the data pipeline that we are going to use, paste it there and save the file. So what this data pipeline does? Well, actually pretty simple. First, we have a bunch of sensors, 10 to be exact, that are automatically generated from that for loop. And what those sensors do? Well, they are waiting for a file called bitcoin.json landing at a specific location that we are going to define in the connection fs underscore default. Then we have the task processing, which really does nothing except printing the path of the file as shown right there. Then finally, we have the storing task with the Python operator as well, executing that Python callable function, printing the message, storing data on the output. So the important part here is actually the sensors and the fact that we are going to generate 10 different sensors waiting for the file bitcoin.json to land at a specific location. All right, let's run Airflow in order to check what we will get from that data pipeline. So open your terminal and in the folder airflow-2, execute the command astro d start in order to start Airflow. Once Airflow is running, go to your web browser, open a new tab and type localhost colon 8080. Then type admin admin and you land on this beautiful page. From there, the first thing I would like to show you is that if you click on admin then pulse, you can see the number of worker slots that you can use in order to execute your tasks. So let's go back to the DAGs and click on admin connections as we need to create a connection for the sensors, add a new record, let's type fs underscore default, like that, file path, and here put a JSON value path with the value slash user slash local slash airflow, slash, like that. Click on save and we are done. So that means we are expecting the file bitcoin.json to land at the path slash user slash local slash airflow. So back to the DAGs view, turn on the toggle of the DAG, click on sensor and click on graph view. As you can see, we have the different sensors waiting for the file bitcoin.json to land at the path slash user slash local slash airflow. You can see that if you click on one of them, then view log. This is exactly what you can see here with the following path. One important thing to notice is that if you go back to the pool and refresh it, as you can see, nine worker slots are currently used by the sensors. Now let's imagine that based on your resources, you are not able to execute more than nine tasks in parallel. And so you will have this pool with nine worker slots like that. The big issue you have right now is that since all the sensors are taking all the available worker slots, you are not able to execute any more tasks. Indeed, if you go back to the DAGs view and schedule the DAG example underscore DAG, then click on it and grab view. Actually, those two tasks have been executed because they are using the dummy operator, which doesn't need a worker slot, but all of the other tasks using the Python operator or the bash operator are not able to be executed because we don't have any worker slot left. In addition, the sensors are just waiting. That means you are wasting a lot of resources on your machine and again you are paying for that. So what else can you use in order to optimize your resources and avoid having all of your worker slots taken by the sensors? Well, that's where you absolutely need the smart sensors. Let's discover them right now. Back to the terminal, type astro d kill in order to stop airflow. Then in the folder DAGs, create a new file called smart sensor.py. Back to the instructions, copy the following code corresponding to the new data pipeline using the smart sensor and paste it. If you are surprised by the way of that DAG is actually built with the add DAG and the add task, 
that means you didn't see the video about the Taskflow API. So if you didn't see it, I strongly recommend you to take a look at that video as it is a new way of creating your DAGs in Airflow 2.0. But what is important here is that this part right there, instead of using the file sensor, we have a new sensor, which is the smart file sensor. Now, if you take a look at the import here, we have a new file, smart underscore file underscore sensor in the folder plugins. But if you open the folder plugins, we don't have it yet. So create a new file called smart underscore file underscore sensor.py in the folder plugins. And in the instructions, copy the following code corresponding to the smart file sensor. Like that. So what do we have here? Well, in order to add a new smart sensor, you need to overload a current existing sensor. In our case, that's exactly what we do with the file sensor. We create a new class, smart file sensor, inheriting from the file sensor. Then you have to specify two things. The poc underscore context underscore fields corresponding to the key names that are used to initialize the file sensor. And then you have to implement is smart underscore sensor underscore compatible to indicate whether or not that sensor is a smart sensor or not. Once we have created our new smart sensor, there is one more thing to do, which is modifying the configuration file of Airflow. So back to the instructions. If you take a look right there, copy those two lines and paste them in the file.env like that. Save the file. And basically here, we are activating the smart sensors in Airflow. Then from that parameter, we are specifying which sensor is actually a smart sensor. And what you can see here is that we specify the smart file sensor as a smart sensor. So if you create a new sensor like the smart F3 sensor, you will need to add the class in that parameter. Okay, everything is ready. Let's run Airflow again. So here in your terminal, type astro d start. Once Airflow is running, go to your web browser, open a new tab and type localhost colon 8080. Then admin admin. And you land on this beautiful page. I'm pretty sure that you are surprised to see that you have some DAGs that you didn't actually create, corresponding to smart sensor group shard 0, 1, 2, 3, and 4. If you remember during the presentation, I talked about centralized processes that will be in charge of evaluating your sensors. Well, those DAGs are actually the centralized processes that are in charge of evaluating your sensors. All of your sensors will be spread among all of those DAGs, those five DAGs, in order to be evaluated. So the first step is to start scheduling all of those DAGs. So let's do this like that. And before scheduling the smart sensor, we actually need to create the connection fs underscore default, like we did previously. So fs underscore default, the file path with the JSON path colon slash user slash local slash airflow slash. Save the connection, go back to the DAGs, and you can start scheduling the DAG smart sensor. Now, if you click on it and go to graph view, this time, instead of having the sensors with the border color in green, we have them with the border color in blue, indicating that those sensors are actually smart sensors. Now, the most important thing is that we have nine different sensors, but if you take a look into the admin and pools, this time, instead of having nine worker slots taken by the sensors, you have only five worker slots taken by the centralized processes corresponding to the DAGs evaluating your sensors. So at this point, you are able to execute as many sensors as you want. You will always end up with five worker slots taken by the DAGs evaluating your sensors. By the way, let me show you that everything works. If you go back to your terminal and type docker ps, then docker exec and the container ID corresponding to the scheduler right there, then touch bitcoin.json to create the file for which the sensors are waiting for and go back to the DAX view. Then click on smart sensor and grab view. If we wait a little bit, at some point, we will see all of those sensors having succeeded. And here they are. The last thing I would like to show you is that if you go back to the DAX view and click on smart sensor group shard three, then the task 
and view log, as you can see right there, you have the nine sensors, the nine task instances that have been evaluated by the DAG. So in this video, we have discovered the smart sensors and why they are actually really useful and powerful if you run many sensors in your F for instance. Indeed, your resources are better optimized. You are now able to run as many sensors as you want. You will always end up with the same number of worker slots taken by the centralized processes. So I really hope you enjoyed what you have learned in this video. See you for the next feature.